So I should put these on my ears? Okay, so these are where you're going to go Huh? Okay, cool. And then this would be like a some kind of liquid in here? It didn't. Huh? Let's get to it. That's enough banter. Let's give the people what they're really here for, not my unintelligible ramblings. Hey, what's up? My name is Jefferson White. I play Jimmy on the Paramount Network's hit show Yellowstone, and this is Welcome to the Yellowstone. Thank you so, so much for clicking on us. Of all the things to click on, an ocean, a veritable safari of stuff to click on. There's an elephant over here. That's an elephant noise, not great. I'm gonna workshop that. Or you guys could put one in over when I do this with my mouth. There's an elephant over there. That's like an ad for some kind of car, right? Over here, you got other stuff, other fun, exciting things to click on. But instead, you decided to click on us. Not that we're not fun and exciting. And as a matter of fact, we are. Um, so thanks so much for joining us, the point I'm trying to make. Um, we're going to, this is episode seven. And so, naturally, we'll be talking about Yellowstone, episode seven, A Monster is Among Us. Um, I'm getting a signal from the producers that it's time to begin the recap. And that this time, we only get five minutes my agents and, and lawyers are in a really long, nasty, brutal legal dispute with um, with the producers right now to try to get seven minutes for these recaps. And you got to tell you, it's not going well. Um, they are stonewalling us in a major way, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, we're doing everything we can. Um, but for the time being, working with the constraints that have been forced upon us, five minutes, here we go, begin. Okay, Yellowstone episode 107. Um, the very first thing that happens, John Dutton is out, uh, he's driving to the Stockman's Dinner, which is a big, important political fundraising event, and he drives past a bus of tourists taking pictures of a bear. You might remember this bear from the previous episode, the bear that threatened Casey. John Dutton gets out, tells the tourists, you gotta get out of here, that bear's dangerous, that's a freaking bear. Um, and they uh, are reluctant to leave, but eventually do when John Dutton fires a gun into the air, which is some fucking... <laughs> Not a healthy way to communicate. Not a great, not a great way to to convince a group of people that you're sane. Um, then the next thing we see is Monica. She's in the hospital. She um, she's having literally having uh, brain surgery because of the concussion that she suffered in the last episode. Um, she's under she's under um, anesthetic. She's being operated on. It's very nerve wracking. It's very tense. Casey and Tate are there. Um, it's a lot. We don't necessarily know if she's going to be okay or not or what the long-term effect of this injury are going to be. Long-term effects of this injury are going to be. Then JD, he's got to the Stockman's dinner. He's a it's it's a very important political event as he's sort of, you know, as he like continues to try to consolidate power in the Montanical political Montana political Montanical, the Montana political landscape. But at this dinner, he starts to sort of feel as though he's being cut out. He sees other sort of important conversations happening that he's not a part of. He starts to feel like maybe he's being edged out of Montana politics. He gets a, a spidey sense. Um, can we say that legally? Talk to the lawyers. Can we say spidey sense? Um, okay, so then we got Christina and Jamie. Christina's Jamie's campaign manager um, setting up their campaign officer. Cam campaign office. Uh, Jamie talks to Christina and tells her that his goal as a politician, as the attorney general of Montana, is to prevent change, is the opposite of change. He wants to... Um, to maintain this lifestyle, he wants to fight for the Dutton, uh, the ranch, the Yellowstone. He wants the opposite of change. And Christina says to him, that's the, the most idealistic thing I've ever heard. Um, now, it's amazing. We get our second flashback. We get our second, our second chance to get to know Evelyn Dutton. Uh, so we see uh, the Duttons at Christmas in the past, um, a sort of a very different Dutton family, a Dutton family before it was rocked by the, the tragic loss of um, Evelyn and then Lee. So we also see a young Lee Dutton here. And um, we see a young Beth um, having her first period and Evelyn talking to her about that experience and sort of um, showing a, a real kindness and warmth towards her daughter and telling her daughter that she's going to have to be hard on her, that Evelyn's going to have to be hard on Beth to prepare her for how hard the, the world's going to be on her. It's a, it's a really touching moment and it also... I think helps to helps us understand and contextualize um, the flashback we had seen before, in which Evelyn is being very hard on Beth. So this is a, a really important, um, a really important flashback that gives us a lot of important context for Evelyn's relationship to the family and Beth's relationship to Evelyn. So back in the present, 
Beth is is fighting with that memory. She's she's dealing with these memories of her mother. She's sort of contending and wrestling with this uh, this trauma in her past. She goes out to the pen and, and tries to get on this fucking horse. She wants to ride this fucking horse in some way. I'm sure to make her mother proud or to sort of honor the memory of her mother. But she can't fucking get this horse to listen to her until she's approached by Walker who is an expert cowboy who sort of gives her a little lesson that becomes a little intimate and is seen by Rip and John Dutton. So that sort of maybe foreshadows a little bit of tension between, uh, between Rip and our, our friend Walker. Um, remember that, put a little flag in that, put a little feather in that hat. Um, then you got Dan Jenkins and Rainwater still working out their deal still trying to figure out if they're going to team up for this massive uh, casino development on Dan Jenkins' uh, land that abuts the Yellowstone. It's a very sort of thorny deal. It's these two very powerful, very ambitious players kind of feeling each other out and seeing if it's going to be possible for them to trust each other long enough to, um, to accomplish their goal of sort of dismantling the Yellowstone and tearing down John Dutton, who has really um, hurt them both. Yeah, John Dutton has pissed off both of these guys to the point that they're on the verge of teaming up to uh, to bring down John Dutton. Um, then Walker, Ryan, and Jimmy have been tasked with getting this bear off the ranch by sort of getting this bear the fuck out of here. Um, they, they go to do that, but Jimmy has uh, forgotten the rifle. Easy mistake. Easy mistake to make. Anyone could have made that mistake. Um, and in sort of trying to scare the way of the, of the bear, Jimmy falls off his horse. Easy mistake to make. Could happen to anyone. Happens all the time, I'm sure. Uh, and Jimmy gets... It can't be done. Talk to my agents. We demand two more minutes for this recap. Um, Jimmy gets... He goes up a tree is the point. And then uh, Walker and Ryan scare the bear away, or so we think. Um, and then Rip sort of is also tasked with um, with going into the, 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 the woods to hunt up this bear. And he comes across two tourists, sort of foreshadowed by the tourists we saw earlier, hanging from a cliff. So they've, they've fallen and they're hanging from this cliff and Rip tries desperately to save their lives, but they both fall and die. And then Rip is charged by the aforementioned bear and shoots it in self-defense and kills it. But in that, Rip, trying to do the right thing, basically witnesses the death of these two tourists and then has to kill this bear in self-defense. In the hospital, Rainwater, uh, or, you know, back at the school, Rainwater goes to visit the kid that accidentally punched Monica, and this is still while we don't know if Monica's going to be okay. Um, so this kid could be in a lot of trouble, and we see Rainwater sort of contending with this violence and uh, the state of the res and sort of, um, you know, like be walking amongst the people. Um and then back at home, JD feels very, very bad. He's very sick. He's fucked up. He feels miserable. He's vomiting blood. And he says, God damn it, I'm not ready for this. I got too much to do. And that's the episode. That's a Yellowstone episode 107. Not bad. That was maybe like six and a half minutes. That's pretty impressive. You were really close. I think you have two episodes left. Yeah. You can do this. You think so? Yes. But the episodes get more complicated over time. There's more to talk about with each episode. I don't know, you're getting closer. Wait, if you want a shallow reading of this, if you want a sort of <laughs> precursory surface level fucking synopsis, read the back of the DVD box, <laughs> okay? If you want like a thoughtful, in-depth dramaturgy, if you want like a real examination of the characters and the themes and the story here, you talk to me. And it's gonna take seven <laughs> minutes. <laughs> It can't be done in five. It's not possible. Okay, let's talk about some of our most important stuff. Most important stuff. Okay, episode MVP. This episode, Thomas Rainwater. He's, at the same time that he's making these sort of big decisions up top, he's like dealing with Dan Jenkins. He's making these huge sort of um, like bird's eye view plays and decisions. He's playing 4D chess. He also goes to see this kid who accidentally punched Monica. So he's also dealing with this very personal, intimate question. So at the same time, I, I think we're getting to know Rainwater much more and we're understanding him as a person much more as we see him deal with conflicts that are like very important, or not, not any more important, but are sort of big scale and small scale at the same time. Um, he's a fascinating character who we're getting a like deeper, um, a deeper understanding of. And our other MVP, 
Dan Jenkins. Because exactly the same thing's happening with Dan Jenkins. As these guys sort of team up and we see this other side of them, we start to see that they've both actually been treated very badly by John Dutton. And in some ways, John Dutton might be the villain and these two guys might be our heroes. Um, I feel tremendous sympathy for both of those characters, Thomas Rainwater and Dan Jenkins. Okay, my grandma's favorite line of the episode. My grandma loves um, all the profanity on the show. It's her favorite part. She's always trying to get me to swear more. She always, hey, Jeff, throw in a few more fucks. Um, so in my grandma's favorite line of this episode, Casey says, he's a fucking kid about Tate. And Ryan says, fuck you, Jimmy, about Jimmy. <laughs> Dang. Um, some fun Easter eggs, a couple of fun Easter eggs about uh, this episode. So the tourists at the beginning who are taking pictures of that bear, those tourists have really nice lenses on their cameras. And this happens often when they've got like prop cameras in uh, film production is like, some of the, there's a, there's a little Canon 24 to 70 F, uh, F2.8 L2. That's a $1,700 lens. It's just on a prop camera. And every time I see that, I'm like, fuck. I wish I was a background actor on Yellowstone so I could pocket one of those lenses. You shouldn't steal from your work. But like, just in terms of like, if you can get away with it, embezzle a little. Do a little embezzling. <laughs> Cats can have a little salami as a treat. Do a tiny bit of embezzling. I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna say that in a in a room surrounded by my coworkers and bosses. What's up with these cameras, though? What are you doing with these after the thing, after the deal? What's going on with this microphone? Can I keep this mouse pad? You just embezzle a little. You do a little embezzling. What's the difference between like eating way more than your fair share of the cashews at craft services and pocketing a $1,700 lens? What's the difference? <laughs> There's a huge difference. Don't steal from your job. Okay, another funny Easter egg. That bear in the bear sequence, we filmed this pretty late in the season, and that bear, he, he was sort of moving towards hibernation. Like, he was kind of like, it, bears, you know, they hibernate in the winter, and that bear was, like, headed in a hibernation direction. So he was pretty chill by the time we were shooting that. And one of the things they did to, like, get that bear jazzed to, like, chase me was they put a bunch of raw chicken in my pockets. That's true. They were trying to fire that bear up, and I'm too likable. They were like, look at this guy. Don't you want to chase this asshole? And I was like, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? What's up with you? I was asking the bear a lot of questions about his life, which is a great way to get people to like you very quickly is to ask them questions about their lives. Um, I was asking the bear so many questions about his life that he didn't want to chase me up that tree. He was like, I don't know, this guy seems pretty chill. This dude seems pretty cool. I don't know why I would chase him up this tree. And they put some raw chicken in my pockets and he was like, fuck that guy. <laughs> That's all it takes. All it takes, you know, the difference between a, a, a burgeoning friendship and a burgeoning faux ship, a little raw chicken. A <laughs> little bit of raw chicken in your pockets. You wanna make some enemies? Put some raw chicken in your pockets. That's all I'm saying. Doesn't smell great. Um, okay, Jeff's favorite guest stars. Uh, my favorite guest star of this episode is Kylie Rogers, who plays young Beth. I think she's amazing. And I think that um, she's such a good actor and it's so fun to see Beth on either side of the sort of formative experience of her teenage years and her her life to see her on either side of like some of these formative traumas because in Kylie's performance, you see sort of foreshadowing to Kelly's performance and in Kelly's performance, you see like beautiful echoes of Kylie's performance. It's incredible. Um, so I think, I think Kylie Rogers is an amazing actor and always Gretchen Maul because she's also fantastic and uh, I learned so much from watching from watching those scenes. I learned so much about acting. Uh, Jimmy gets hurt this episode. He falls off a horse, gets chased up a tree. He vocal cords get fried, screaming for help. And both Walker and Jimmy, or both Walker and Ryan say fuck you to him, which hurts. Doesn't feel great, that's for fucking sure. Um, in memoriam this episode, did anyone die this episode? The tourists. Oh fuck, yeah. In memoriam, those tourists. Dang. And the bear. The tourists and the bear. Shit. Pour one out. Pour one out uh, on the laptop? Where, if I was going to pour one out, you think on the laptop? Yeah, that makes the most sense. The producers are signaling that I should pour this onto the laptop? <laughs> um, no, let's not do that. Pour one out, though. Pour one out in, metaphorically. Symbolic. It's a symbolic pour. Imagine that I'm pouring. Um, let's hear some questions from Instagram, please. All right, so we talked a lot about the bear this the episode. Bear. So here's a good question. 
from JAT010. Would you rather... Jet zoo. Sure. Would you rather fight a bear-sized duck or a dozen duck-sized bears? This is a very good question. I think a dozen duck-sized bears. A bear-sized duck is frightening, and I think that's a little bit, I think with a dozen with a dozen duck-sized bears, you can sort of kick at them, and they're gonna have a hard time getting above your feet, which are like, you know, you're wearing shoes, you're sort of well-protected, you know what I mean? It feels like it'd be easier to defend yourself, whereas a duck-sized bear, or a bear-sized duck, that thing's fucking big, it's got, it's got access to your eyes and face with its huge bill. <laughs> I feel like the bears you could sort of kick at and run away from. Although God knows enough army ants, enough of those fucking Amazonian army ants. Do you guys know about this shit? They'll fuck you up. I think it's easy to imagine. Like, God, they're small. They're not they're fucking bugs, dude. Bugs are, bugs will fuck you up. They're kind of like bear-sized or ant-sized bears. Those Amazon army ants are kind of like ant-sized bears. You heard it here first. That's a hot take. Hot take. Can we do a graphic for that? Hot take. Do you have any more hot takes? I've got so many more hot takes, <laughs> and they're all about ants. <laughs> next time on. Yeah, next time, for sure. We got another question? How you doing with that? Yes. Actually, no question. This is from Cowgirl in My Heart. No question. You are just so dang adorable. That's all. That's so nice. Can I be really honest with you, cowgirl in my heart? I worry sometimes, I'm so appreciative of everybody's kindness, I worry sometimes that the more I show of myself, the less people will like me. Do you ever have that fear? Sometimes if, somebody, if people respond right away to you, I go, fuck, this is great, they like me. I, it feels so good. And then I almost wanna hide myself because I don't want to, um, I don't wanna give you something not to like. If you already like me, I feel like I should just stop talking so I don't fuck it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a way of withholding yourself. So next question. As a defense mechanism. You want to talk more about that? No. Yeah, hit me up, Ria. What's up? All right. Do you consider the people in the bunkhouse family? Why? That's from Cummins 6.7 liter. Yeah, I think that um, Jimmy considers the other cowboys in the bunkhouse family because he, he doesn't have much of a family otherwise, and these are the first piece of people that really believed in him and really... Um, sort of been patient with him. They buy him that hat. They really take care of him in a lot of ways. Um, and also I, Jefferson, consider those guys um, my family at this point. It's really beautiful. Denim Richards and uh, Ian Bowen and 4 J Smith and Jake Ream and Ethan Lee and Ryan, uh, Ryan Bingham. And those guys, those guys are my family. We hang out. I hang out with them. I definitely see them more than I see my real family. Sorry, Mom and Dad. Um, Hope Olivia Worrell wants to know, does acting on Yellowstone have any impact on the way you live your life outside of acting? Yeah. A acting on Yellowstone has given me a whole sort of um, different perspective on uh, a lot of stuff. It's meant that I've spent a lot more time in Utah and Montana and Texas, sort of around the country. It feels like I I've gotten to know cultures and people that I wouldn't necessarily otherwise have been exposed to. And I just try, I try to listen I try to learn from everyone because um, it's a really unique opportunity to get to know people that I might another, otherwise never have been exposed to. And I hope for those people too, they feel the same way about, um, the, about getting to know me. I hope that we, 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 I think we all have a lot to teach each other. And Yellowstone has been an amazing opportunity to get to know some people that I might otherwise never have had the chance to learn from. All right, um, Balwi Grobin asks, why did you decide to do Yellowstone? Boy. Um, <laughs> I'm very, very lucky to be on Yellowstone. When you're an actor, you don't really decide anything. You audition for everything, and the ones that you get, you thank your lucky stars for, and you do. So I never expected to get on a cowboy show. I read this script, and I thought it was fucking incredible, and I made an audition for it, a, a self-tape. And like every other show that I auditioned for, just assumed that was the end of the line. You know, you make an audition, you send it, you loved the script. I loved it. I couldn't wait to watch it. As soon as I read the show, I said to myself, oh, man, I can't wait to see this. Kevin Costner, this is going to fucking rock. Um, and then when I got it, I uh, felt just so blessed and so lucky. But I did, certainly didn't make any decisions along the way. <laughs> I just got really lucky. Um, Shell2Cursey asks, can you really ride and rope? 
I do okay. I, I'm getting better. I, I can really ride. I can do really basic. You know, I can do the basic stuff. I can, like, certainly do most of the stuff that Jimmy does on the show except bucking. Uh, roping, I'm, I'm working on roping. It's funny. you got to get a really good handle on riding before you can then rope from horseback because you have to sort of be able to put the car in automatic. You know, you know, you got to be able to put the horse on auto drive before you can also rope off its back. And I think the thing with roping that slows me down is that I really don't want to put... I don't want to put the horse in danger. I don't want to put the calf in danger. I'm really excited to learn how to rope from horseback, but I, I don't want to do it in a way that puts any of the animals in danger. So that's a very slow process. All right, and our last question for the day. Um, Gloss and Guns wants to know, what's been the most rewarding or satisfying lesson you've learned on set? The most satisfying lesson I've learned on set, this is a little bit of a cop-out, but I think that it's about learning how to learn. I think that it's about, like... I've learned so much about acting. I've learned so much about filmmaking. I've learned so much about writing. But I've also learned so much from people that I... From from the crew. I've learned so much from, from every department. I, I think that acting is, in a lot of ways, about learning how to learn. It's about learning how to, like, stay open to... Um, every day's new lesson. Because of this show, I've learned how to ride a horse, and I've also learned how to, like, shoot analog photography. I've, like, learned um, how to help a camera operator by sort of cheating out or on the other side of a cowboy brim, like a, the, hat, the brim of a cowboy hat, which is, like, a constant struggle. And I've also learned, like, uh, what's the best boom mic for, like, interior ensemble scenes, you know? So, like, I, I think that acting and Yellowstone has been for me so much about like learning how to learn and how to stay open to, um, to learning from everyone, you know, cause I've also learned so much about this lifestyle from the Wranglers and the real life Cowboys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then here's a fun thing we might do. Maybe let's try this. Hey, I'm, we've never done this before. What if we maybe like put up on Instagram a phone number, people call it, they say their favorite moments from season one what if we had already done that and we had them right here and we were about to listen to them and I never heard them before? I think that's a great idea. Does that sound like a cool idea? I just had it right now in the moment. Let's check it out. Hi, this is Betsy at Betsy Miller 8909 on Instagram. And my question is, how do you get into character before filming? Thank you. Bye. That's a great question. Everybody's got a different process. I really, I like put the clothes on. I walk out into like the dirt at the, at the Yellowstone ranch. There are so many things. Shooting Yellowstone is such an immersive experience because we're really out there in Montana. We're really surrounded by these animals, the smells of the ranch, the, the mountains, the sort of feel of the sand under your boots, the feel of wearing boots. <laughs> there are so many little things, like tiny little given circumstances, like immersive sensations that make getting into character a really holistic experience. Just sort of walking onto the ranch um, really helps me personally get in character. Everybody has a different process, but that's that's part of mine, is like f really breathing in the air, really feeling the, the dirt, really smelling the, the horse shit. <laughs> you know, it, all of that really helps me get in character. Um, great, let's do another one. Hi, this is Jim Conan. Jim Conan on Facebook, too. My favorite scene was the dinner table to see everybody's personalities really start to show. <laughs> yeah, man, 100%. I love there's two. There's the there's the sort of table in the bunkhouse where the cowboys, like, gather around and everybody sort of, like, kick shit around and you learn a little bit more about all those guys. But there's also that stuff around around the Dutton table up at the house that is fascinating. I love those scenes because all those actors are so talented. All those actors are so... Um, each of those characters is so specific and has such sort of rich given circumstances that when they're all in the same room, all those like heavy hitting actors and all those heavy hitting characters in the same room, it's so fun to watch the sparks fly. I couldn't agree more, man. Okay, amazing. Thank you guys so much. So folks, Yellowstone, um, incredibly popular show. Smash hit. Most watched cable drama of the summer. Um... Profoundly successful by every uh, by every sort of metric you can imagine for television. Changed my life forever. Most important job of my my life. Spent the past three years uh, of my life doing it. Um, been incredibly and profoundly life changing experience for me. 
we've been calling some of my friends, checking in with them, um, asking them their experience of the show, getting their take on it uh, as people that are important in my life. And, you know, in general, that's been pretty disappointing. I've been pretty disappointed in my friends. So today I thought we'd bring in a ringer. We'd bring in a real expert to kind of shut this thing down and, uh, and uh, sweep the finals in our sort of trivia contest. We thought we'd bring in a dead ringer. My mom. Um, my mom, Amy White, public librarian in Lisbon, Iowa, um, has been a devout supporter of my career my whole life. I'm very, very lucky. Um, she gave me my first acting roles, performing in puppet shows with her at the Lisbon Public Library in Lisbon, Iowa. Um, so she's always been uh, a sort of agent, casting director, auteur who supported my work, and I'm incredibly grateful for it. So let's give my mom a call, talk to her about Yellowstone. Okay, I gotta call my mom, but you know how it is these days with cell phones, right? I don't know my mom's number off the top of my head. I just go to the contact that says mom in my phone. So what we're gonna do real quick is I'm gonna go to my, I'm not gonna say my mom's phone number out loud, or will I? Depends on how she does. Maybe if we, uh, if she doesn't do very well, we'll dox her. Do you really not know your mother's phone number? I don't. She do uses you, a cell phone. Do you know any phone numbers? Do I know anybody's cell phone numbers? Yeah, like from memory. No. I know like home phone numbers of my friends from when they were kids. You know what I mean? But by the, when we all got cell phones, we, I got a cell phone when I went to college, basically. No, no, I got a cell phone when I was like a sophomore in high school. And since then, there's no point in retaining this information. Interesting. My brain needs that space for much, much different and important information. Like um, the name of every character in every Star Wars novel <laughs> ever written. Obviously. Um, okay, so this is my mom. Hello? Mom, it's Jeff. Honey, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm I'm okay. Mom, I was describing how some of my earliest acting jobs were um were doing puppet shows with you at the library. Sure. Yeah, I miss you. I wish you'd come back, but I don't think you could sit behind the puppet stage anymore. But the kids would love it. I get back there, but my rate has gone up. I don't know if you could meet oh, my quote, wow. Mom. Not on a I public library budget. We could work something out, absolutely. But yeah, those were the days, right? I, I, I you know, sent you on your way. You uh, had some good experience. I believe we were paid at least once. We did some, uh, we went as far as Cedar Rapids and we got $100, which I shared with I you. I remember so, this very specifically. Yeah, my first, first paid uh, acting gig. I got 50 bucks exactly. to do a public show. And it felt yeah, like a million dollars. I remember that feeling like a million dollars. <laughs> Absolutely. You were like uh, maybe nine or ten. Yeah, I mom, remember. We should, we should say, Mom, I, for, I thought we should mention um, that Paramount Network very generously donated some DVDs of Yellowstone Season 1 and Season 2 to the Lisbon Public Library. Excellent. Oh, my gosh. That, that is a very, yeah, a very nice uh, thing. And they, yes, absolutely. We appreciate that. My, uh, my patrons love that. I talk often, every day, somebody says, hey, I love the show, and this makes sure that everybody can see it, if, even if they don't get cable television. So it's awesome. That rocks. Um, I'm so glad. Thanks, Paramount Network. Very cool of us. You. Very yeah. cool of you. That was an aspiration cool of us. All of us. So, Mom, yeah. I've been doing, one of the things I've been doing on this show is I've been calling my friends and asking them some very simple Yellowstone trivia questions and sort of dunking on them for not knowing the answers. Um, no. Yeah, I know. It's a shame that my friends don't support my uh, professional or creative life. Um, but I, start, I well. thought we'd bring you in as a ringer at the end here <laughs> to just fucking <laughs> embarrass my friends. Does that seem... Are you ready? Well, it, it seems kind of mean, but I... That's, you know, I'm, I'm willing to go along. I, I probably know the answers to the questions. I am, of course a fan of you and a fan of the show. Oh, and thanks, uh, yeah, I think they should support you, but uh, that's their choice. I'll be happy to answer any questions. It's a real badass move to be like, oh, I don't want to be mean to your friends by destroying them in this contest. 
That rocks, because you know you're going to bury these kids. Okay, check it out, Mom. Well, First question. No doubt. What's the okay. name of Kevin Costner's character on Yellowstone? Oh, John Dutton. Easy. Easy. Okay, next question. What is Kevin's youngest son's name? Kevin's youngest son. His youngest son. Uh, yes, the, yes, Casey. Casey Dutton. Boom. Casey. Two for two. Amazing. Okay. What is Casey's son's name? So this is John's grandson, Casey's son. Oh, yes. Easy. Tate, the little guy. Yes. Love Tate. Yes. Tate Amazing. Dutton. You're cruising. Okay. What is my character's <laughs> full name? What? What, what is, is my character's, character's full name? name? Yeah, my full name. On the show? Yeah. Uh, it is Jimmy uh, Herdstrom, H. U R D S T R O M Jimmy Herdstrom coming in strong with the last name very good well not not related to the Dutton so an important an important <coughs> distinction. distinction yeah um okay here's a here's a question for you what is my character's okay. father's name your char- Jimmy's father's name Jimmy's father's name his father's dead, and I believe he has a grandfather, but I don't believe that we know his father's name. Is, is this something I missed? No, you're right, Mom. It was a cruel trick. I tried to deceive ah! you. It was a trick question. We do not know Jimmy's father's name, and you didn't fall for the trap. You were too What's clear-eyed. The... Oh, well, I could have said Mr. Hertstrom. <laughs> Uh, but that would have been good. Right. That would have been good uh, test taking. That would have been no, excellent test taking skills. Tra- yeah, well, yeah. J- yeah, and, and he's not, yeah, he's not really on the show, so yeah. you don't We don't know. We, Jimmy says in episode part. 103, Jimmy says, all my family's dead or in jail. My grandfather yes. and me, that's it. Um, yes, he has that conversation, yes. So, Mom, right. you, you should know, you're five for five on these trivia questions. You have effectively just destroyed the competition, just embarrassed so, them. You're telling me, I mean, these are pretty easy. This is like, really, we're talking basic 101. Real 101 shit. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so you're saying that your friends couldn't answer these questions? Not as, not as well as you. Let's say that. Okay. All right. So they scored lower than I did. That could, but one could say I, that. I'm sure there's questions that you could ask me that I don't think there's more devoted fans out there than I am. I mean, I'm totally devoted to the show. You're going to have some people on Instagram challenging you about that one, Mom. Oh, man. Really? Challenging that they're more... Leave my mom alone. She doesn't mean to challenge your fandom, other fans. Yeah. Well, she doesn't know what I'm she's sure saying. That, well, I was going to say uh, that I bet there's people that could answer questions that I can't answer just because I might be a little too focused on your activity and maybe let the other things, you know, not, not, I mean, I'm watching, I'm watching everything, but um, if this is a like full show thing, and you start talking about those development agencies and all these deals going down. And yeah. That I might get a little fuzzy in that area. There's so. a lot There's a lot going on. It's a very complicated show. Very much so. Very much so. In um, a good way. Mom, thank you so much for chatting. I We're oh, going to let you go. Yeah. We're going to let you go lest, um, okay. lest we, we keep you too long. Uh, thanks. I love you. I'll talk no, to you soon. No problem. I love you too, Jeff. Have fun. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Dang, Amy White yakking on him. Just fully yakking on him. She killed it. She killed it. Where does she get off embarrassing my friends? What's hard is to, it's like, that. it actually makes the contrast that much more painful. <laughs> For her to be like, oh, these are easy questions, Jeff. Anyone who loves you even a little bit would know the answer to these. <sighs> Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for clicking on us. Thanks for following us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for following the Paramount Network on YouTube. Thanks for following the brand new TikTok account that we're totally making. That's a lot, and they're all very short. That was like one word on each side.
you guys tired of this bit yet? This, the producers are signaling no. The producers love it. They want way more of this shit. They want to have to make way more little graphics. This is going to be a hard one. It's going to be one that scrolls. You know, that's a message is going to have to slowly reveal itself. Here's one that's really fast. Boop. Could you read that at home? Boop. It's going to be hard to pause on that. Boop. What's it say? I don't know. They'll fill it in later. They could make me say anything they want. They could put any sorts of weird things in my mouth. Boop, boop, boop. Brrrr. <laughs> so many words. <laughs> what did they all mean? The point I'm trying to make here is thank you so much for being here. We're so grateful for your engagement, for your comments, for your questions, for all of it. It really means the world to us. We're having a blast doing this, and it, it's so fun. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time on Welcome to the Yellowstone. Oh, my mom texted me. Dang, are we still rolling? Yeah. She says, hi, Jeffy. Just a reminder that dad's birthday is today. He'd love a text or call. I know it's my dad's birthday. I know. I'm going to call. Hey, oh, that's amazing. I can say this. Hey, dad, happy birthday. I love you. Thank you so much for everything. Happy birthday, dad. You guys got to edit this real fast so it gets out on his birthday. Or if you miss that deadline, you got to do it by next year. We'll, we'll save it. I'm not going to specify year. what we'll year it is. It. Thanks for everything, Dad. Happy birthday. I love you. Mm-hmm.